you've definitely heard bad things about party speakers or monkey coffins. Things like poor driver placement on a really wide baffle, uh, lack of racing, boomy base, um, terrible off-axis response, lack of damping material inside the enclosure. Things like this are mostly true about the large majority of speakers like this, but the pit vipers break all of these stereotypes. I have to admit, I was pretty hesitant to build these, but I'm so glad I did. The designer, Paul Carmody, really nailed it on this one. All of the parts in this video were purchased by me. This is not sponsored or affiliated in any way. I'm gonna give some measurements and some subjective thoughts towards the end of the video. Before we move on any further, if you are interested in DIY speaker building, you're already in the right place. That's all we do on this channel, so go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos just like this. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the design that makes up the Pit Vipers. So this is a three-way ported design, starting with a 12-inch high-efficiency Dayton subwoofer. It's a dual voice coil subwoofer, um, dual 8-ohm. We're gonna be wiring it in parallel. Uh, most of this enclosure is actually dedicated just to the woofer and all of the airspace that's required for it. We're gonna have dual front firing ports, and they are gonna give us an F3 in the mid-30s. Our mids are gonna be handled by a five-inch Dayton driver. This driver has proven itself in many, many DIY designs. Um, it's actually going to match the aesthetic of the woofer cone. It's attention to these little details that really take this design to the next level and shows what kind of a designer Paul Carmody really is. All of our highs are going to come from a one inch soft dome made by Peerless. Using a three way design like this is going to help us achieve lower distortion and potentially better off axis response. Um, with about 100 watts of input, we should be able to achieve about 108 dB of output. One of the biggest killers of sound quality is panel resonance. With an enclosure this large, we need it to be very well braced. I'm gonna take some half inch material and rip it up and create what are called window braces. What these are gonna do is tie all of our panels together and raise the resonant frequency of each panel. We want to raise this frequency above the range that our woofer is gonna be playing in, thus eliminating most of the audibility.
For our ports, I'm going to be using 2 inch PVC. I'm going to pressure fit this into place along with some super glue. After that, I'm going to give it a round over or a flare. This will help to reduce some of the chuffing at higher output levels, but is mostly aesthetic for this speaker. The mid-range enclosure here is really straightforward. I'm just using a six inch PVC end cap. I'm gonna use pressure and a lot of super glue to hold this guy into place on the rear of the baffle. No party speaker is complete without a fun finish to match, so I'm going to laminate these and give them a painted finish. I'm going to go with a really bright Oasis blue, and I'm going to use a matte finish on these to help tame some of that brightness. Um, all, everything I'm using here are Rust-Oleum products, so that's Rust-Oleum primer, paint, and a matte clear. Finally, I'm going to give the corners a round over. This is mostly just for a fun look, not necessarily for diffraction, as all that should have been accounted for within the design itself earlier on.
So our crossover is going to use second order electrical filters on all of our drivers. The woofer gets a notch filter and that's just about it. There are a couple of padding resistors on the midwoofer and on the tweeter. All in all pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Overlaid Paul's measurement on top of mine. Both of these are on axis. Uh, both of these were done using a time gated system, so we can disregard just about everything below 200 hertz. Um, you can see that there's a small rise from about 500 hertz up to about 4K in mine. That may be for me measuring a little bit closer, so we'll have to check that out sometime in the future. We can see that our impedance is nominally around 4 ohms. I've tested these with multiple amplifiers at this point at pretty high output levels and I've had no issues to speak of. and buy.